Once again, I have a question that is much easier to solve now that every question comes with a calculator, a graph and calculator built into the test. So I would absolutely be using that here. Um, you just need to take a second and be very careful, enter those two inequalities into the calculator. They Notice they give you the inequality symbols, and so that part isn't really going to be a problem for your calculator. Maybe it makes you a little bit more nervous, but it's just a matter of entering it correctly. And Hopefully you know how to read this kind of situation, right? You can tell I've got a purple and a green. And so you can see that in some places, um, you've got this green, uh, I can't really touch it. Uh, you've got this green and kind of in the bottom left here that is only green. So those would be solutions to the top equation. And then if you kind of look at the top part of the graph, you have some places that are only purple. Those would be solutions to the bottom equation. But what we're looking for is solutions to the system, meaning it has to fit for both equations. So that is where the two shaded regions overlap. That's kind of what's going on in the right here. You can hopefully see that it's a slightly different color. It mixes the purple and the green, and it kind of covers the right side of the graph. So what we're looking for then, because these are such kind of predictable points, we're looking for which one is going to fall in that zone. Well, let's just go down the list. Negative 14, 0. Hopefully you don't confuse x and y here. Negative 14, 0 is going to be all the way over here. That's going to be all the way to the left. Negative 14 is the x-coordinate, so that's over here. So that's not going to work, right? That's all white. That's not a solution. That's outside of the solution of both uh, equations. 0, negative 14 is going to be... Uh, it's going to be down here, so that's in the green. It's kind of right above the, where the equations are. Um, so 0, negative 14, that's down there. That's green, but that's not purple, so that's no good. And then 0, positive 14 is up here, so that's in the purple, but not in the green. So that's, all again, only in 1. But 14, 0 is going to be kind of all the way to the right now where my axis is. So you can see that is in the zone that is shaded. Yeah, I can't, can't show a point here. Oh, wait, maybe I can. Let's just do this. 14. And comma, look at this guys, you're watching me discover a new feature. That was so easy, there it is, 14, zero, solidly in the zone here for these two inequalities. So you can even do that, look. Oh, as I was doing this, I was thinking, where are people gonna mess up? Well, having worked with students for years, even 11th and 12th graders, I see you guys confuse X and Y all the time, especially when there's a zero involved. But look, with Desmos, you don't even have to know the difference between X and Y. You can just enter the point and poof, it appears on the screen in front of you. This is really a miracle. And it's making it so that there's really no reason for you to get a lot of these graphing questions wrong. Basically anything with a system of equations, graph the system, see it all happen, and just use the calculator to find the answer. We could do this the old fashioned way using what ends up being my favorite strategy, plug points into equations. I'm not going to go through the whole thing here, but I will show you because I do think the strategy is really good to think about, especially if maybe you're not great with the calculator, you don't know what you're looking at, we can at least see the numbers do the work for us. If we started with choice D, we would need to test that point in both inequalities. So we would have the zero is Y, zero is less than 14 plus 7, that is true, right? 0 is less than 21, that's true. And then on the bottom equation, it would be 0 is greater than or equal to negative 2 times 14 minus 1. So uh, you, I, I'm not going to do all the math here. Negative 2 times 14, that's a negative 28. So we can see we're already very negative, and then minus 1 is only going to make it more negative. So definitely 0 is greater than that. So that also works. That would be proof that choice D is the answer because the point that they gave me kind of fits both inequalities. Just to show you what, what it looks like when it goes wrong, if I do choice C, um, we did 0, 14, that would put 14 in the Y position, and so 14 is less than or equal to 0 plus 7. Well, that's not true, right? 14 is less than 7? No, that's wrong. Now, if we did it in the other one, 14 is greater than or equal to negative 2 times 7 minus 1. That is true, right? 14 is greater than or equal to uh, negative 14 minus 1 is negative, uh, um, oh, why am I doing 7 here? S uh, 0. Careful, Mike. Careful. See, this is very easy to mess up. So negative 1, it's definitely, net 14 is greater than or equal to negative 1, so that is true, and that's why when we saw this point C, 0, 14, it was in the uh, purple but not in the green. So that's proof there that it works in the second equation, 
but not in the first. So you can see why maybe the old strategy that I love so much, plug points into equations, isn't as useful as it might have been. There's still opportunities to mess up. It does turn our algebra into arithmetic, but if we make an arithmetic mistake, we plug something in the wrong place, yeah, maybe we lose a point that we shouldn't have. The calculator, as long as we enter it right, it's gonna kind of solve that problem for us and we don't even need to do the arithmetic. So definitely start looking for opportunities to use that calculator so you can get through a lot of questions much more quickly and confidently than you would have in the past.